Let's roll some edges in this next video. So a common way of uh, dealing with the edge of a uh, spun form is by uh, rolling over the, uh, the lip of it so that it tucks underneath and becomes a nice, rounded, comfortable place to, to touch, pick up, or grab. You'll see this on everything from clamp lights to metal buckets to uh, individually one-of-a-kind made pieces. So uh, there's a couple different ways of doing this, and uh, I'll go over uh, how I approach it in my work. So I have it set up here in the, uh, the lathe just to save time. I've already uh, spun and uh, got it seated on the, uh, the base of the chuck. It's a 20 gauge, uh, three inch diameter uh, aluminum blank that's been annealed. And what I'm gonna do is just roll this lip over. So whenever you're done with a form and ready to do that, the first stage is to uh, trim it. Even if it's not slightly eccentric, trimming it sort of half anneals the piece and will make it easier to, uh, to bring that, that edge around for, for rolling it. So uh, depending what tools you like to do for trimming, uh, I have a large uh, high-speed steel lathe tool that's set in a handle and you just wanna make sure that whatever cutting edge you're using for trimming is at approximately the center point of the piece. If it's too low, it won't cut efficiently, and if it's too high, it'll rub against the piece. So uh, depending on the material, the thickness, and the tools that you're using to cut it, sometimes it can be quite loud, so you might wanna use hearing protection. Of course, make sure, again, that you're using all proper safety equipment, like a face shield and gloves. So I'll go in. Trim this. And you just want to make sure that it's completely centered. This is the last chance you'll have to reach the edge. So you want to make sure that it's cleaned up. You could uh, stop the lathe and even file it. Or if it's not critical, you can trim off the burr on either side of it with the lathe tool. Just want to make sure that it's it's perfectly concentric um, and trimming that off again it'll sort of like half anneal the piece uh, the tool that i prefer to use for uh, rolling an edge to start it is these um, kind of bent jaw pliers they've been um, polished and bent and then i uh, pre-lubricate them and uh, what i like to do there's all different techniques for this what i like to do is support them with the tool rest you need to figure out how much material you need to roll over inside and that'll determine where you're going to grab with the plier. So you don't really need a pin for this, but you want to figure out where that end of that top jaw is going to go in. And that's what will crease the metal and start bending it back this way to roll it under. And then you'll grab it with the pliers. And fold it over. And I did grab a fair amount of material. Uh, but it'll be good for this demonstration. So that starts it and that little crease that the pliers put in will give rigidity to the piece to support it while you're working on the outside edges. And then what I like to do is just go back in with um, just a basic spoon tool. Bring that lip in. And then there's all different kind of forms depending on what the piece is for. And you just want to make sure that it's tucking all the way in so that when people are handling the pieces, they're not going to catch the edge of the metal. Uh, one thing that's really important is as you're tucking it in, you want to make sure that your tool doesn't contact the body of your spinning because it can sort of gouge into it and leave a mark and everything. So it's a little bit of a delicate procedure, but you can go in and just sort of push it back in on itself. And again, you can get all different shapes subtly as you practice this, and uh, each one's going to be a little bit different. And for me, I find that I have the best control of that, and I can um, have a variety of different rolled edges based on the size of the piece, the materials, the overall design, things like that. So um, again, I could just sort of tuck that in a little bit more, and that's a little bit more of kind of a flattened rolled edge but it's gonna be very smooth. Um, one other tool that can work, let me just kind of lubricate this again.
And again, in a lot of these tools come from production, production shops where speed is really essential. So here you have a rotating wheel with a groove in it that once you have it starting to bend and, and fold back on itself, you can lever this into it and using the tool rest as a fulcrum, push that force into it and that will start compacting uh, the rolled edge. And you can sort of angle this slightly either way as well to control that. Um, since I started rolling edges before I found this tool, uh, I kind of do it with the spoon tool and sort of do it by hand. Uh, I use this tool mainly if I want to adjust the outside or the sort of diameter of the rolled edge. And I'll show you how I do that. So again, just sort of using it as a fulcrum. You wanna make sure that wheel's spinning with your spinning, and then I'm pushing in on it. And that can actually still reduce the diameter and tighten it up even more, or you can sort of fatten up the curvature as well. So I kinda, myself in my spinning practice, I use this as a refinement tool rather than the main tool that I use for, for rolling edges. But everyone develops their own ways of working and what makes the most sense to you. But this is a great way of resolving the edges of metal that uh, for people that aren't metal workers, often just a bare edge can feel sharp, even if it's not. Uh, and this is a nice way of giving kind of a finish to the piece. So uh, it's a little bit more of a, uh, advanced technique and you might uh, want to practice a little bit but I think it's it's a great design element for the pieces. If you enjoyed this video please be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you can hear from me when I post future videos. Thanks for stopping by.